Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. For the typical patient with a new diagnosis of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, I recommend rituximab and CHOP chemotherapy. Uh, it should cure approximately 60% of patients, even higher than that in selected subgroups. Uh, but we are recognizing that there are subtypes of diffuse large B cell lymphoma that have inferior outcomes with rituximab and CHOP chemotherapy, and so there is a lot of effort that's gone on in the past few years to figure out ways to identify these patients and try to find alternative and hopefully better strategies for them. It's possible to think about diffuse large B cell lymphoma by what we call cell of origin. It turns out that some types of diffuse large B cell are the so-called ABC subtype and some are the so-called GCB subtype. And these two molecular subtypes have different outcomes with RCHOP chemotherapy with the ABC subtype having an inferior outcome. So there's been a lot of effort in the past few years trying to find therapies that would be specific to the ABC subtype that could hopefully improve the outcomes in that group of patients. And the two most promising strategies right now are the addition of lenalidomide or Revlimid to the RCHOP regimen. So that sometimes gets the name R2CHOP or R squared CHOP. In a phase two study, that regimen looked very promising for the ABC type of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And then the other strategy is to take the drug ibrutinib, which is a oral BTK inhibitor that has unique activity in the ABC subtype of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And there's an ongoing international study looking at the combination of RCHOP plus ibrutinib for ABC subtype diffuse large B cell lymphoma. A lot of studies have examined looking at CHOP chemotherapy compared to other second and third generation versions and really never showed any benefit and outcome and really just an increase in toxicities. This issue is being revisited one more time with RCHOP versus dose-adjusted REPOC with the idea that the dose-adjusted REPOC allows us to dial up or down the chemotherapy so we can really deliver the maximum amount of chemotherapy safely to the patient. The hope is, of course, that the more chemotherapy we can deliver enables us to have a, a better outcome. Additionally, the infusional nature of EPOC therapy may also provide an advantage over the bolus infusion of CHOP chemotherapy in inducing responses. CALGB, now the Alliance, did a large study looking at RCHOP versus dose-adjusted REPOC. We're still waiting on those data, but of course those data are going to be very important for answering the question. In the meantime, we're really stuck not knowing the answer to that question. My own belief is that our CHOP is probably going to be the best treatment for most patients. And I really reserve the dose-adjusted REPOC for those patients who have very poor prognostic markers that would really indicate that they would likely have a poor response to our CHOP regardless. I think it's important to keep in mind that dose-adjusted REPOC does involve a hospitalization for each cycle of chemotherapy and really involves a great deal of monitoring in order to determine whether or not you need to adjust the doses upwards or downwards based upon the neutrophil count during the patient's nadir. About 5% of cases of diffuse large B cell lymphoma will be the so-called double hit. So if you look uh, by FISH testing, you will find uh, genetic alterations resulting in overexpression of the MYC protein or the BCL2 protein, and these are the so-called double hit cases. And these these have these ca these patients have a very poor outlook with standard RCHOP chemotherapy. It's not established definitively whether alternative regimens, such as the dose-adjusted EPOC R regimen, is better for double hit lymphoma. But many of us have adopted dose-adjusted EPOC-R for these patients because of 
a hope that it's a better chemotherapy platform for these patients with this, with this very dismal prognosis with standard RCHOP chemotherapy. There is another high-risk subset of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the so-called double expressors or double positive population. These are patients that, ha that have high levels of BCL2 and MYC protein expression as demonstrated by immunohistochemistry uh, versus the double hit patients where the abnormality is detected at the genetic level using fish testing. About 25% of patients will be the, in this double expressing category, and they seem to have a prognosis that's not quite as bad as double hit, but not as good as the folks who don't have the double expressing uh, phenotype. So many of us have adopted the uh, dose-adjusted EPOC-R regimen for patients with a double expressing phenotype. Again, unproven whether that's truly better than our CHOP chemotherapy, but um, because we know that the RCHOP regimen really is not, does not generate outcomes that are adequate, we are trying uh, different strategies for this patient population. Brentuximab vidotin is a drug antibody conjugate that targets CD30. It has very high single agent activity in lymphoid malignancies that express CD30 at a high level, like Hodgkin lymphoma and anaplastic large cell lymphoma. It turns out some, sub, some cases of diffuse large B cell lymphoma have modest expression of CD30. And there's emerging data that would suggest that you may not even need CD30 expression to get activity with brentuximab vidotin, or you can still get some activity. So there is an ongoing study looking at the combination of brentuximab vidotin when added to RCHOP chemotherapy, and those results were presented at the 2015 ASCO meeting. Very preliminary, quite honestly too soon to say whether this is a promising line of investigation or not, but certainly one that we'll all be paying attention to as, as the data matures.